Do you know how many people visited your website last week? And do you know where the most popular pages of your site are and where your visitors are coming from? Is your site converting visitors into customers? Perhaps your Facebook business page is driving a huge amount of traffic to your website that you don't know about. Or is it Google My Business? If you don't know the answers to these simple questions, you are really missing out on vital information. Tracking the activity of your website is essential if you want to make the right marketing decisions and Google Analytics is probably the best option available and it's totally free. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and install Google Analytics from start to finish on two of the most popular web platforms out there, WordPress and Wix, so you can start looking at the performance of your site and grow your business no matter what size it is. I'm Luke Durand, the founder of RankingAcademy.co.uk where I help small business owners like you with their marketing efforts for better online visibility, step by step and click by click. If you are new to my channel, why don't you subscribe today and click the bell button so you don't miss any of my future videos. And if you like this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up as it will be very helpful for me to grow my channel. Before you can install Google Analytics on your website, you need to create a Google account. You may already have a Google account in the form of a personal email address. If this is the case, I would still suggest that you create a new account dedicated to your business. In order to do so, just go to google.com and click on sign in on the top right hand corner. Then click on the option create account and start filling in your details. For the first name and the last name, I usually use my own details. As per the username, I use the domain name of the website I am trying to create an account for. In this instance, I've created a brand new website and I need to create a new Google account. So I'm going to use the domain name as a username for the email address. I have created a brand new website called lottijaesthetics.co.uk. So I am creating a Gmail account which will be called lottijaesthetics at gmail.com. Choose and confirm the password you want to use for this account and then click next. On the next screen, you will be asked to provide your phone number. Make sure you provide a valid phone number as this will be used to verify your account. You can also add a recovery email address. This option is optional. However, I thoroughly recommend you fill it in as it will add to your security. Add your date of birth and your gender and then click next. You should now see a new window prompting you to verify your phone number. Click on send. You should receive a six digit verification code which you need to enter in the verification code field. Enter the code and click verify. Google will ask you whether or not you want your phone number to be added to all of your accounts across Google services. Since this is a fresh creation of an account, I would skip this step for now. You will now be presented with the terms and conditions from Google. Scroll all the way down and tick on both options to agree with the terms and condition. Then click on create account. You will see a pop-up asking you to confirm the creation of your Google account. Just click confirm and that's it. Your Google account has been created and by default, you are already logged in. If you check on the top right hand side of the window, you will see by default a little icon here which means you're logged in. Let's verify if we have created the account by clicking on the Gmail link at the top. And here we go, your Google account has been created. Once you've logged in, you will see a welcome pop-up window. Just click next and then OK. Right, so we've now created our Google account. To make sure that we've got the right email address, let's verify this. You can either check the bar in your browser as you can see here, it says lottijaesthetics at gmail.com. Alternatively, on the right hand side of your screen, you can click on the icon, which will also indicate the username as well as the email address. So we've got exactly what we wanted. The next step is to create our Google Analytics profile for our website. So navigate to google.com slash analytics. Once there, Click on sign into analytics. This will open a new page, which will take you through the process of setting up a Google analytics profile for your website. The next step is to click on sign up on this screen. You will see that Google analytics can be set up for either a website or a mobile app. 
Today, we're looking to set up a Google Analytics profile on websites. We will leave it as the default option. Time to fill in the details in order to set up the Google Analytics profile with the very first field being the account name. For the account name, what I generally use is the name of the business or the organization I'm working with. So in this instance, I'm going to use Lottie J Aesthetics. For the website name, I generally use the actual domain name of my client. And finally, for the website URL, obviously I use the URL. Make sure you choose whether or not your website is in HTTP format or HTTPS. This is a very important selection. If you don't know, either check with your domain provider or the way your site was set up. In this instance, I'm going to use HTTPS. The next selection is industry category. From this drop down, you can select what category your business falls into. It is not necessary to select anything if you don't want to. However, Google will also give you data within your industry. So I always select something. Finally, to choose the time zone where your business operates. The very last option is a data sharing settings. If you want to amend any of these, I would advise you read the information attached to that. I'm not going to cover this today. By default, every box should be ticked unless otherwise, as it is recommended by Google. Once you're done, just click on get tracking ID. Once you've clicked on get tracking ID, you will be invited to agree to Google's terms and condition. Just tick on the boxes to accept the terms and services. And finally, click on the I accept button. And that's it. You have now created your Google Analytics profile. All we need to do now is to install the code that's been provided to us onto our WordPress platform to start with before we do it on Wix. So stay tuned. I've just logged in the dashboard of the WordPress platform for my brand new site, lottieaesthetic.co.uk. If you've got a WordPress website, you will be familiar with this interface. One of the best ways of installing Google Analytics is to use a plugin. Just go to the plugin option in the navigation bar on the left hand side. Once in there, just click on add new. Now you will have the ability to search for a plugin that will enable you to install Google Analytics. In the search bar, simply search for Google Analytics. You will see from this screen, there are multiple options to choose from. The most popular one and the one that I recommend is called Google Analytics for WordPress by Monster Insights. One of the reasons that I choose this one is because it's regularly updated. As you can see, it shows that it was updated four weeks ago. In order to install the plugin, simply click on the button Install Now, and then click on the Activate button. That's it. We've now installed the Monster Insight plugin. All we now need to do is to connect our Monster Insights plugin with the Google Analytics profile we've just set up. On the left hand side menu of the interface, you should now see an option called Insights, which is where we're going to access the settings of our new plugin. So click on it. And right at the top, you will see an option that is asking you to authenticate with your Google account. So simply click on that button. This will redirect you automatically to a Google sign in. So use the Google account that you just created. In this instance, I'm going to use Lottie J aesthetics at gmail.com. Click on next and then enter your password. You should now see a pop up from monsterinside.com who wants to access your Google account. Obviously, we need to say yes to that. So click on allow. The next screen is to ask you which profile you want to set up. You could have multiple profiles attached to a one Google Analytics account. In this instance, there's only one. And if I use a drop down, you can see that there's actually just one profile. So by default, it's selected the all website data. Just keep that as it is for now and then click on complete authentication. Then you will see another pop up that's actually finalizing the setup. And there you go. You're all set. Now let's have a look at the reports. By default, Monster Insights will provide you with a set of basic reports directly 
available in your WordPress interface. To access them, go to the navigation bar and right under the Insights link, click on Reports. This will bring up the set of reports available to you for free. Right now, obviously, it doesn't display any data because this is a fresh website that is receiving no traffic. But here is what you can expect when you've got a set of data available. So here is an example of a website that is receiving data from which you can see the number of sessions, the number of page views, the new versus the returning visitors, what people are using to visit your website, i.e. a desktop, a tablet or a mobile, which countries, where the traffic is coming from, uh, and the top pages. So this is very, very basic type of reporting, which is somehow useful when you're in WordPress. But the true benefit of setting up a Google Analytics is to have access to all the data. And this is what I'm going to show you now when we log into Google Analytics. So head back to google.com slash analytics again and click on the sign into analytics option on the top right hand side and log in again using the account you've created. You now have access to the whole suite of data reporting from Google for your website. I'm not gonna cover all the options today. There's quite a lot to cover on this, but it is paramount that you set this up and you check it regularly. I will cover this topic in a tutorial coming your way very soon. So this takes me to the end of the setting up of Google Analytics on WordPress. Let's now move on to the next step, which is setting up Google Analytics on a website built on Wix. So if you're running your website on a Wix platform, installing Google Analytics is super simple. We've already covered step one, creating a Google account, and step two, creating a Google Analytics profile. All you need to do now is to log into the dashboard of your website on Wix and click on the settings option. Once you're in there, select the tracking and analytics option at the bottom of the left-hand side menu. In there, you will see a number of options where you can add analytics. Choose the Google Analytics option, which is the very first one. At this point, you will be asked to enter your Google Analytics tracking ID. If you don't know where to find this, simply log back into your Google Analytics profile, scroll down to the admin area by clicking on the link admin at the bottom left of your screen and then click on property settings in the middle column and this is where your tracking id is located right at the top simply select it and then enter it in the field where it says google analytics tracking id and then click apply and that's it you have now associated your google analytics profile with your website on wix your data will start showing up in Google Analytics within 24 to 48 hours. We're done for today. Thanks very much for watching. If you found this tutorial useful, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell button. For any comments or questions, post them right below the video and I will respond to them. Hope to see you soon. Happy marketing.